Yes, guys, I know that this one comes as a surprise on this ending so soon, but I never really planned for this one to be super long, guys. So yeah, this is the final episode of What If Naruto Was Anos Voldigo Reincarnation? But as you already know, guys, new What Ifs are coming up soon. A lot more for you guys to enjoy, so don't be sad. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the final episode, guys. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over the other channels. Yes, I indeed have four more channels that I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. All the links will be down in the description. So go ahead, check them out guys and subscribe and enjoy. So without further ado or wasting more time, how about we jump right into this final episode. Let us begin now guys. So the last part that we left off, Mito was now a full-fledged ninja of the Hidden Leaf. Her latest mission had really gave her a true understanding and perspective on what it means to be a ninja. Her battle with Zabuza and Haku had really changed things for her. And now, she was going to be a part of the exams. Yes, the Chunin exams, something that she's been looking forward for for some time now. As she met up with her two teammates, Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. Sakura, like many Konoichis within the village, was a part of the village new medical program. Naruto was the one that had brought Snade back. Yes, he was able to bring Shizune and Snade back. While that was going on, Naruto was at the moon, talking to a man known as Isamu. He was the legacy of Hamura. The Sage of Six Pats brother, him and many others live up on the moon. Nurut had offered to bring them back towards the earth, but they preferred it up here. They did not want to be a part of the remaining clan down there. They seemed to be ashamed of their ways. They had a way to come back to the earth and they knew of the Hayuga's ways and what they did to their own family. The reason why Naruto was up here was pretty simple, as he was here to speak to Kaguya Osusuke. There were things that Naruto did not know of. It was recently that he found out about Kaguya and Naruto wished to understand. At first, they were against this. However, they soon realized just who exactly they were dealing with. And they realized that they had no option but to do. As he says, as Naruto opened the void and entered into Kaguya's domain, the both of them started to battle. She believed in that. She was able to overcome him with just raw strength. However, she soon come to realize that she was dead wrong. Naruto was above her, beyond her, whatever he was. Not only his power, his strength, his existence. He was truly incredible. Their battle wept through the dimension. If it wasn't a space beyond time, they would have probably destroyed everything. As Naruto was holding back, given how nonchalant he took the battle, his strength had continuously increased over the past couple of years, and he was at least 10 times stronger than he was. And given how strong he was when he faced off against Yagra when he was transformed by that god, Naruto wished to understand Kaguya though. He wasn't here to kill her, as Naruto was able to strip her down, pull the darkness out of her. The soul-quenching darkness that wanted her to take all chakra. It was a fruit that she devoured. However, Kaguya returned back to a state of confusion before she eat the fruit. As Naruto started to talk to her, she found herself crying. That was supposed to be impossible. How was she crying? As she didn't understand these emotions that she's forgotten so long ago. They came back with a force that she couldn't 
quite understand as Nurta gave her time by constructing illusionary dimension for her to understand, for her to accept the way things are right now and what it is that she needed to do. While that was going on, Orochimaru went to visit one of Kanoha's greatest enemy, that was Oniki, who had wanted to bring Kanoha down ever since the third great shinobi war. However, if there was a chance that this would fail given that Minato was involved, Oniki didn't want his name to be dragged through the mud or put his village through that again. However, if they succeed, Kanoha's shares would also be profitable by his village. So yes, the big day finally came as the students down below started to participate within the exams. Mito was happy as she saw her big brother. She knew that he wouldn't miss this. Showing off her skills and her strength, Mito was phenomenal down there as she went up against Neji and defeated him. Aizumi saw Naruto as she smiled at him. She had kissed him a few years back. Since then things has been going well. They had a conversation on why she had kissed him. There were already talks about her being put into a political marriage. However, she didn't want to be with someone that she did not personally care about or physically care about either. That is why she decided to run this experiment to see if her feelings for Naruto was true, and they were. Since then the both of them had been dating, Naruto himself never understood the concept of love. While he was one of the most powerful men in the world, he never got that concept but he would like to try to understand it. She herself was similar to him emotional wise. The both of them were just taking it step by step. There was only a few people that were aware of this, not many. So as the exams took place down below, Naruto felt it. Naruto knew what was coming. His father knew what was coming as well. And they were prepared. They wanted to show the rest of the world. They wanted to show all their enemies that attacking them would be nothing but a waste. Because it will cause their ninjas complete chaos and destruction. As Naruto personally decided to show them that as us arrive. Us believe that during these intervention of him watching Naruto, Naruto did not know that he was there. However, that was false. Naruto knew that he was there the entire time. However, Naruto did not see us as a threat. The others was more of a threat than him. Us was arrogant and angry as he started to attack Naruto. Once again, Naruto proved that he was the strongest by demolishing him. He didn't even stand a chance against Naruto. Even after releasing power that would have wiped away the earth, Naruto simply destroyed the power with destruction magic as he turned us into dust with flames. But not before us empowered the tail beasts down below to cause a rampage, believing that that would distract Naruto for him to get away. But Naruto killed him so quickly that he did not stand a chance in hell. He then proceeded to descend downwards to handle the tail beasts and end this once and for all. So yeah guys, this is basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place, check it off yourself. So we see we jump right into this final episode. Let's begin now guys. Well, well, well. This is not something I expected. The son in Orochimaru spoke. The tail beasts had double in size. Not only that was the case though. The five tails, which was a dolphin horse now had massive horns coming out of its head. Its body looked more ferocious and dark. The four-tailed monkey now had four arms, its mouth dripping acid as it moved. Their fists collided, well fists and head, collided with a dome, trying to break through. As for Shikaku, Shikaku body was looking like a porcupine. The sands, Mixing and coming out of his body like spears. Orochimaru did not expect this. However, this was a healthy turn of event. Kanoha won't stand a chance in hell. You made a mistake, Minato said, standing in the barrier with him. You made a mistake coming back here. You will not leave this village with your life. I will carry out the sentence of your execution for all of your crimes against this village. Now, now, Minato, Orchimaru said with a smile. 
Don't go skipping ahead before you truly see what is going to happen. The coffins. Oruchumar stood behind. Both of the lids drop open to reveal the first and the second. However, Minato did not seem surprised or worried in the slightest. I figured that you had something up your sleeve of this caliber. Minato said looking toward the tail pieces. While Oniki may be a warmonger, he's not an idiot. He wouldn't hand over his tail pieces without proper cause of you showing him that you could end my life. You don't seem worried, Urchimar said, trying to understand the man look. Because I am not, even if you somehow possibly took me down in here, you still would not leave this village. Oh, I presume you're talking about your son. Yes, I heard quite a lot about him. Oh, trust me, Minato said cutting him off. You don't know the half of it. Meanwhile, outside of the barrier, the monster fight Shikaku, it's Swallow Gara that was on its forehead. Things went so crazy so fast. One moment, Temari and Konkuru were getting Gara somewhere that he could transform without interruption. When suddenly, he was hit by a strange light. The next moment, the sand erupted out of him, throwing them back. However, they were not alone though. The damn Uchiha and the Namikaze was on their tail the moment they took off. Mito and Sasuke stood there. Temari and Konkuru stood by their side. While their first goal was to go against Kanoha, that wasn't the case anymore. Gara had lost his mind. While they were a distance away from the other two tail pieces, Gara's sand was spreading as it was coming towards them. They realized in the moment that they could not stop that. Temari hands were trembling as she held on to her fan. Sasuke Sharingan was blazing despite the grave danger. Konkuru was standing there in fright. Mito reached behind her as a sword that was resting on her back. She proceeded to unsheath the blade, holding on to the black and red hilt. Temari noticed there was a strange inscription on the blade. However, what the hell do you think that's gonna do against something like that? Mito simply smirked at her before she held the blade up and brought it down. A massive red wave of power erupted from the tip. The sand was split and destroyed. Shikaku's right arm was torn off as the monster arm collapsed, boom down to the ground. Everyone was startled and shocked by what the hell just happened. Mito did not stop though as she created a clone. The clone gave her a boost and threw her up in the air. As Mito twirled before she slashed several times. Shikaku was slashed, his body being torn apart. His whole being collapsed into sand. As Mito landed, Sasuke was shocked by this. He never knew that she possessed such power. But this wasn't exactly her power. Her brother had gave her this blade. It was a very special blade for her to use in extreme situations to protect herself. Not to mention her little cat. Her little friend that was always by her side. However, at the moment, it was engraved in her hand. Looking into her palm, there was a swirl. That is why there was not an ounce of fear on her face. As she watched the beast reform though, his regeneration ability was top notch. Shikaku was back to full height within seconds. The moment he was back to full height, he roared. A monstrous, chaotic roar. Mito was blown away. Chains emerged from her back and dug into the ground. However, the ground was erupted and blown away as well. Shikaku then slammed his guts. Hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds of sand bullets erupted from his throat. These weren't normal sand bullets. One of them was enough to obliterate a giant piece of land and there was hundreds of them. However, a colossal castle erupted up, blocking every single one of the sand bullets. Shikaku did not hesitate to charge forward. 
not wasting time until something shoot from the entrance of the castle. Slamming into Shikaku was a massive nine-tailed beast. He bit into Shikaku's shoulder and ripped, tearing him apart. However, Shikaku roared. An ungodly amount of pressure erupted from him, throwing the nine tails back as he stabbed his claws into the earth, stopping himself. Naruto descended right down beside the nine tails. Their body has been induced by powers beyond this reality, he said. Naruto held his hand out to the nine tails. Veins start to pop into Kurama's eyes. His claws start to thicken. His body started to enlarge. Kurama was colossal by this point, far greater than what he ever was, as he felt great, greater power than his own oozing through him. He looked towards Naruto. What did you do to me? He said. Well, I just thought I might give you a helping hand, said Naruto. Simply tear the Shikaku apart. Your claws will stop and negate any ability for him to recover. However, do not kill the child. It seems Kanoha and the San were pitted against each other by an enemy of both. And what about those two, Kurama said, glancing over. Over there was the four and five tails. All hand of them, said Naruto as he teleported. Naruto appeared in front of Mito. Big brother, go back inside and help the people that you can, said Naruto. I'll hand the rest out here. As for you two, Tamari and Konkuro froze up. There's nothing for you to worry about. Your people were tricked into this by Orochimaru of the Sanin. And don't worry, I will make sure that your brother doesn't die. So go on ahead and spread the news to the other Sand Ninjas. Naruto held his hand up as they all were teleported away. As Naruto proceeded to teleport once again. Both the four and five tails came to a stop. Their gaze fixated on him. They were just mindless and rampaging as Naruto stood in front of the boat of them. These were just aspects of their real forms. They were feeding off the life force of the Jinjuliki and the Chakra as well. So it didn't matter what he did to these outer shells. The Jinjulikis will be fine inside and the true tail beasts will be fine. After all, in a sense, these things are just using them. They were like parasites. An enormous boost in power of a parasite. The both of them threw their attacks forward in several horns and fists towards Naruto. However, he simply held his hand out. Graviol, he said. Their bodies were thrown by an invisible force. Given their massive size, they took down a large portion of the forest. They both got back up hate in their already rampaging eyes. They held their head to the sky and started to charge up a beam of pure destruction, enough to wipe Kanoha away. Normally, the power wouldn't be this strong but they were parasites. As Naruto could see, the energy flowing through it. He held his hand up to the sky. The ear around his hand started to react in an unnatural manner. The space around his hand started to bend in an unnatural manner as well. Rainy, said Naruto. The spell that was literally the grasping, magic hand. As Naruto bent the space around his hand and the space between their attacks. The tail beasts were confused when their attacks simply vanished and exploded in the air. Naruto bent the two spaces until... There was a gap in between. He then swapped the spaces, literally bending space. And the bomb was teleported upwards after it went through that gap. Having no time to waste on them, Naruto held his hand out. Graviol, he said, activating his most powerful form of gravity magic. Their bodies crash into the ground like a bomb. They struggle. They try to get up, however. Naruto walked forward as he stood in between the both of them. He placed the hand on both of them as a strange symbol appeared on their face. Black and red chains erupted from the symbol and started to dig into their flesh. They howl and rip, trying to get out, but 
they could not physically get up. The black chains reach as the redness seemed to grip onto their very essence and yank the darkness out of them. They howled out and screamed in terror as their bodies were reduced smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until the only thing remaining was the Jinjulikis on the ground. As new to hell, the power in his palm as he clenched his fist around it before it shattered into particles. That is when he saw Kurama coming over towards him. Kurama laid down one of his tails. Inside of the tail was Gara. As Naruto gently placed the boy down towards the ground. Back inside, the sand ninjas. After being informed, Ibiki quickly started to spread the news for them to stop. The betrayal run deeper than they thought. They had to leave. However, they could not. The barrier prevent anyone from going outside. Things were becoming bad for the enemy. However, the tail beasts, they were gone. Just like that. Confusion started spread amongst the ranks. Wondering what was going on. Inside of the dome, Minato was clashing against the first and the second. Orochimaru was watching what was going on outside. He was cursing. However, something abnormal was happening as a sound ninja proceeded to stab a chunin right in the chest the chunin jumped away the sound ninja was confused ha huh. how wasn't he dead something abnormal this doesn't make any sense the chunin was looking at the gaping hole that was in his chest before it suddenly closed up he was greatly confused Kakashi and Guy, Asuma, Kurunai, they watch as many people get stabbed, got hit with techniques that should have claimed their life but they walked it off. They realized that not a single Kanoha ninja or San ninjas were falling in battle. What the hell was going on? Baki looked around confused as he was amongst the Kanoha group, no understanding the true threat that was here. How is this possible? Are they all undead or something? Baki said, trying to understand the gravity of the situation. It's my brother. Mito said it out. Kakashi glanced towards her. Think about it, Sensei. Who else do you think have the power to do something like this? As they glance, when Naruto descended from the heavens, like he was some sort of god. It was true. Reflection magic, mixed with his healing magic. However, he was reflecting the damage upon himself. This barrier is basically a feel of condensed magic that kept and connect each and every one of them. So every fatal wound was being projected towards Naruto. However, there was no human wounds that could end his life. You had to destroy his source and there was no blades, no weapons, no attack that any human on this planet possessed that could do that. So all of that reflecting magic was being reflected upon Naruto. However, they couldn't end his life. And the healing magic was healing everyone. Because they were all connected. The only ones that were going down were the sound ninjas. Naruto stood in mid-ear. His words washed over Kanoha. Enough! Every single sound ninja froze. Compulsion magic in his tone. They all froze. Unable to even move a muscle, they were too weak to even stand up to his words. The barrier fell. Run, said Naruto. His words came out as run to the Kanoha ninjas and the sand ninjas, but to the sound ninjas. It was the most gut-wrenching feeling that they ever felt. Their whole body trembling in fear as they ran for their life. However, Naruto wouldn't allow any of them to escape. He was only doing this so that the younger generation did not have to see the true horrors of what is going to happen next. Here is in Saratobi was in his battle armor as he watched all of the people fled away. Is it over? He said looking towards Naruto. Naruto looked towards him. Not quite yet, he said. And shouldn't you be resting somewhere? He asked and leaving this to the younger generations. Well, it seems that will have to be the goal from now on, Hiruzen said. 
seeing that the village is more than protected with Naruto and his father here as Minato was battling the first and the second inside of the barrier. He was about to say something about that but he saw Naruto gaze looking up there. As Naruto teleported away, the sound ninjas were running as they tried to escape. They were in the woods when Naruto appeared, simply standing in mid-air looking down towards them. Gearia said Naruto. As a black circle opened up in the sky, falling out of it was stones. Small black stones, oozing with strange magic. However, they weren't just falling, they were speeding down. One made contact with a sound ninja. It split his entire body to pieces. It cut through the ninjas like they were made of paper. Their screams of terror could be heard spreading through the entire forest. They were pelted. They were destroyed. Naruto landed as a few were on the ground, gasping for breath. Flames of destruction, said Naruto. His body was surrounded by black flames as they spread. Every single thing in the vicinity, the very earth itself was burned apart. As Naruto was now standing on nothing, he floated in the air. There was a giant, massive trench with nothing inside of it. All the bodies of the hundreds upon hundreds of ninjas were erased. Naruto teleported away as he arrived right in front of Urchimaru. The Sanin was baffled and shocked and frightened as Naruto gazed pour into his. Zarati Dipto said Naruto. A magical circle appeared beneath him as it spread. Red chains erupted from it, binding chains to constrict around the enemy. Orochimaru jumped away but he was not the intended target. The first and the second turn but they were grabbed. The chain wrapped around them tightly. As Naruto stepped toward his father, this is the Edo Tensei technique, he said. Minato nodded his head. I will leave the rest to you, said Naruto. I'll make sure that he does not bother this village ever again. Orochimaru was shouting at the sound four to drop the barrier. However, the moment they did, they slammed into another. They were shocked and confused. What, what the hell is this? Kidamaru said as he punched. However, he could not break through. Seikon and Ukon. Ukon lifting up his head looking around. Drobo went straight to curse Mark Level 2 as he plunged his fist in it. You're simply wasting time, said Naruto. You don't have the power that is necessary to break my barrier. Naruto activated his mystic eye as he looked at each and every one of them. I see, he said. They all got ready to fight until sleep. As Naruto demonic eyes put them to sleep, Orochimaru was once again shocked. However, this was a chance. This was a chance that he was looking for. The Sanin shot forward. Yes, he shot forward intending on driving the blade through Naruto's back and through his chest. However, Naruto spun and cut right through the Kusanagi with his blade of destruction. As he held it in his hand, the Sanin dressed back. He tried to fix the Kusanagi by sending his chakra through it, but it would not work. Your blade can no longer rebuild itself, said Naruto. As he stepped towards the Sanin who was backing away, it seems. You've heard some information about me, but you have no idea the true understanding of who exactly I am. Otherwise, you wouldn't have dared to step foot in this village. Before that though, there are certain things that I need to know. Well then, Urchimar said, how about I tell you it all? He opened his mouth as hundreds of snakes emerged. They all exploded. As Orochimaru gaze fell on Naruto's. Beyond the blood as he saw all of his snake's organs and blood flowing in the air. Time itself seemed to slow down. It was in that exact moment that the Sani knew that he was screwed. Orochimaru pushed himself to his limit as he flashed around Naruto, trying to bypass him with speed. 
He lashed out with a powerful punch, but Naruto ducked underneath and slammed his fist in Asani's face. Orochimaru's head snapped to the side as Naruto gripped him by the throat. Naruto launched him. The ground was so close and yet, the Sonin felt like he was dropping from thousands of stories high. Boom! His body broke through the ceiling and slammed into the earth down below. Orochimaru, agonizing in pain as his body was broken, spat another Orochimaru out. However, to his shock, this barrier also worked underneath. As Naruto appeared in front of him and backhanded him, the Sonin crashed into the wall. Hard. He picked himself up as he blazed through Hansine. Wind style, he said. He blazed through Hansine quickly after fire style. He created an inferno. Oh please, said Naruto. As he proceeded to exhale, and blew the flames out like they were nothing. Orochimaru was truly baffled. Shock. What? What did you just do? He said. Confused as well. Not quite understanding. I simply blew your flames out. It was rather easy. Let me show you what true flames is. Naruto held his hand out as a red flame appeared in his palm. It floated above his hand before shooting toward the Sanin. Orochimaru jumped to the wall but the flame followed. There is no escape in this, said Naruto. It hit the ground and ignites, surrounding the Sanin in a circle. Orochimaru thought it would be easy enough to just jump over it but the moment he was over it, it erupted. The Sanin screamed out in bloody murder as his entire left arm and left leg was burned to a crypt. Erase. The Sanin quickly threw up another form of himself. Orochimaru backed himself against the wall, looking rather fearful, something that he was not used to feeling, actual fear that his existence might truly be erased. I told you, you have no idea what you're up against. Orochimaru froze as Naruto's hand was on his shoulder. That is when a collar appeared around the Sanin's neck. Orochimaru turned as he tried to punch Naruto but his hand stopped. The color started to light up slightly before. Orochimaru's hand was forced back down to his side. Wha what is this? A binding color, said Naruto. The only way for you to break free is if I let you go. Or if you're stronger than me. So as you can see, you are trapped. Now, as I was saying earlier about information, time skip. With the unsealing finish, Minato made his way. However, Naruto was already levitating out of the hole. But he was not alone. Orochimaru came up behind him. Minato prepared himself but Naruto raised a hand. There is no need to worry. He won't make a move. Isn't that right? Orochimaru simply nodded. What did you do to him? Minato asked. I have placed him under my control. Not anything new that he has done to many others in the past. Killing him early would be a waste. There are things that you need to know, said Naruto. His execution can happen after that. Time skip. Every single base that once belonged to the Sanin was raided. Over a few thousand people were returned back to their home. Every single sound shinobis that fought against the cause was annihilated. They were killed in a gruesome manner. The sound faction was completely destroyed. The land of Ricefield, the once proud daimyo who was forced to serve under Urchumar rule, threat of his family being wiped away, came to speak to Minato on behalf of his country. Know that the plague was gone, that stain of Asanin. They could rebuild. They could grow their country back into what it was. They were once the best producers of the best rice in the entire elemental nation and his goal was to help his people return back to that state bring thousands out of poverty after what the Sanin sink them into many people were brought back to Kanoha those who gave themselves up 
There were also those that were useful and they didn't want to die. So they decide to pledge their allegiance to the village, asking for a safe haven. However, there were those like Gurin, who stood against the cause. Aizumi, who had faced off against the girl, annihilated her. Sagetsu was brought back to Kiri, him being once a citizen of the village until, well, he was kidnapped. Jugo was taken out. He was too wild, too unpredictable and quickly tried to rip them apart the moment they came across him. Karen, she was at Uzumaki. She was brought back to the village. A few months like this passed as a lot took place. Orochimaru was executed. He was finally no longer a stain on Konoha reputation and their name. The sound four was not killed. Naruto had removed the mark from each and every one of them. Similar to what he did for Anko. He saw and he understood them. None of them had a chance to truly live. They always was forced to do others bidding. As Naruto had a feeling that they would make a great team on the right side for once. It would take a lot of effort though. And a lot of help. The sand team was released. All of the sand ninjas were allowed to return back home. Mito had spoken to Konkuro and Temari. Well, they were actually a bit grateful that she didn't leave them to just die after Gara transformed. She also spoke to Gara as well. He was a Jinjuliki. She might not understand his pain. She might not know what he was going through. However, there was people there that loved him. She spoke to him. At first, he ignored her. She showed him that his siblings were always there for him. Even in the most dire situation. And something seemed to click in the young boy. She spoke to her father as Minato. As a sign of trust that he believed the son would never, ever make a move like this again. To secure a future relationship without any chaos or problem, Minato helped Gara. For the first time in years, Gara was able to sleep. He was beyond, beyond grateful. Time skip. Months had passed. Oniki was furious. Beyond furious. During these months, one would expect that Kanoha would send word to them about their tail beasts, but no. Kanoha has not made a move to reach out to them at all. Did they really think that they could just keep his weapons? Oniki was furious. He kept on expecting something to be sent from the village, but absolutely nothing. Time after time after time again. And he wasn't just about to take this line down. However, there was a problem in trying to retrieve them if they found out that he was involved he heard about the sonin's death perhaps they got information from him before his demise that is the main reason why oniki has not made a move to go there just as yet to get information knowing that it would lead to an international incident and the moment that is out war will be on the horizon at first he tried to keep his village out of it his name out of it but that damn Sonin screwed him over. He had so much firepower and yet he wasn't able to do a damn thing. The man was pissed off. He was even hearing words that not a single Kanoha ninja fell in the attack. He also heard about Minato's son. Things that seem really impossible but people. They were all saying this like it was true reality. Oniki find this absurd though. Wondering though. If this child is truly something that could pull off such feats. It happened in an instant. He was deep in thought when suddenly someone appeared in his office. A magical circle on the ground and the person seemed to appear on top of it. Immediately, Anvus, hidden away, quickly emerged. Blades and kunais placed all over, ready to strike. Before you have your people make a move against me. You might want to look outside. The door burst open as a chunin run inside, sweat covering his face. Sir, 
he said looking frightened. Oniki gazed out, sighed. He opened the window and flew out. What he saw startled him. Hundreds of magical circles were in mid-air. The center was open and inside of each was a ball. It seemed like a miniature sun pulsing with plasma magma heat. Only he could feel the heat from here. His lips crack. All the water around started to evaporate. He felt drained just by being so close. And he was not even that close. Oniki floated down. What is this? He said. That is an attack that can wipe out your entire village and everyone here, including you. Oniki grit his teeth. What? Not expecting retaliation. You gave Orochimaru your two Jinjulikis. Under the information that your name should not be involved until he successfully killed. Anyone that stood in his path in Konoha, even children, people that did not deserve to die. I want you to explain to me, why is it that you can do something like this and not expect you to feel the same effects of your actions, to not watch thousands of your people die? And before you even think of try ending my life, even if I die, something that you can never accomplish, those attacks will simply hit and there is no way that you can destroy all of them. The hidden stone will be a distant memory of the past. By now you ought to know who I am. I'm sure you heard rumors, heard things that you believe weren't true. However, I can assure you that they are. What do you want? Oniki said. Understanding the true gravity of this situation. Well, first of all, your two Jinjulikis are dead. They were more than willing to attack my village and harm my people, so I took their life. Secondly, the tail beasts now belong to Kanoha, and you and I are going to make a deal. A zek, a contract between you and I. A contract if you were to betray, you will die. A simple notion that you never raise your hand against Kanoha. You conduct your business as you would. You live your life as you would. Your people is never given an order from yourself to attack the village. To attack my village, there will be no more war in the elemental nation. And I will be making sure of that. By you signing this Zek said Root as he held up his hand. The contract form. Enough of your weapons. Move them, said Naruto. He was not in a charitable mood. The ninjas did not know what to do as Oniki gave them a signal to move. In doing this, you remove those, Oniki said. Yes, as simple as that. Simply raise your hand, said Naruto. Oniki realized that he had no choice. And he would rather sacrifice his pride than sacrifice his people and his family. As he gazed behind him to see the menacing balls of destruction hovering in mid-air, it seems they were not rumors. It seems they were reality after all. Enough hesitation, said Naruto, as the balls started to descend down towards the village. Stop, Oniki said. The mere movement of them started to melt buildings. They rose back up. I'll do your damn contract, he said. Remember, going after my village and my people would result in your immediate death. Naruto said, time skip. So you made a contract with him as well? Minato said, yes. This will stop any other great war from ever breaking out. Unless they go against what you say and their death will bring a new leader to rise, then I'll simply do what I planned to do in the first place. If that does happen, this world might call me a demon king once again, said Naruto. After all, his first thought was to simply annihilate each and every one of them, wiping away the nations, wiping away the entire countries. 
Only leave in those that were allied or friends to Kanoha. Have faith, said Minato. I believe they will do the right thing for their people, as leaders. Minato did not want that either. What Naruto was thinking of was committing genocide as much. As they wanted to go against Kanoha, there was too much blood already shed. But Naruto had the power to stop this from ever happening again, so the genocide was not needed. Time skip. Zetsu was traveling underground. Rumors were spreading all around the elemental nation. Zetsu had heard quite a lot about it. He was traveling until something happened. Zetsu found himself on the surface. Confusion written all over his face. There you are, said Naruto. I've been looking for you. Zetsu turned with a confused look on his face. As Naruto stood above him, time skip, the hidden rain. Rumors about the Hokage's son proving to be a foe that was beyond the imagination of what this world understand as a concept of power and strength. Nagato was hearing too much of these. As much as he claimed himself to be a god, which he truly, cold-heartedly believed, all of this was coming as too much. And one of their greatest objects in their path was being defended by this person. Nagato felt it. Just for a split second, something teleporting within the vicinity of his area. It has to be teleportation. There was no way something could move this far without being detected. But where did it go? I must say. Finding out about you was a true surprise. Nagato turned his gaze. There he stood. Nagato was caught off guard. However, he quickly fired. A giant rod from his mechanical walker. Naruto did not even move. The rod stopped in mid-air as he simply looked at it. It crumbled into dust. His demon eyes looked up towards Nagato. Renegon and demon eyes connected. Nagato felt a watch, a backlash. That almost swallowed him. As he leaned over, gasping for breath. My words won't be much to you until you understand. Open your mind and accept the truth. Conan came in. A routine check when she saw what was going on. Immediately she attacked. Firing several shurikens made from paper straight towards Naruto. Obvious, he said. The moment they made contact with his skin, they were burnt and destroyed. You need to know this as well. Come to me. Conan felt her body. Restricted. What the hell? The next moment she stood in front of him. She was confused until he touched her head. They were both beyond shock. Nagato gasped. Conan gasped. As they tried to wrap their mind around. Everything he just saw. That's... That's not possible. Nagato said. You're trying to refuse this reality because... You now realize that all of your efforts, all of your actions was for naught. And you were simply being used. It was tough. Heavily so on him. As Naruto simply showed him what was truly going on. Things that Nagato never even knew about. And it was a truly shocking understanding. He showed him that he was being used by someone. He was a puppet the entire time. Just a puppet for their motives. Someone to hold the eyes. The eyes that he was never even born with. It was given to him. The realization was a truly devastating one on him. I understand the pain you must be feeling of understanding the reality that you actually live in and not the false one that you believe is actually truthful. But you needed to understand because the goal of your organization is to kidnap the tail beasts. While my sister was a target, she's no longer. However, your goal is still something that will not bring peace to this world as you believe. Your whole understanding of reality and what was truly going on was simply 
a forecast that you never truly understood. Allow me to help you and guide you down the right path to what your friend Yaiko could be proud of. No longer this nonsense that you have done. Naruto said looking towards him. Time skip. Obito Uchiha had been lying low. His alias as Tobi. Ever since he had faced that boy. Years ago. And he was almost destroyed. The so-called being that he had spoken to had never returned back to him. He heard movements as Zetsu emerged from the ground. Here he is, Zetsu said. Obito was confused by his words until... Naruto also emerged from the ground as well. Obito immediately tried to flee, jumping into his domain. However, Naruto stood right there. There is no escaping from me. This time you would not receive help from your so-called god, he said. Naruto looked towards him. It is best if my parents never find out about you. Or Kakashi. To believe that you, student and friend, could go this far. Isn't that right, Obito Uchiha? There was a little movement from the man. Showing that he knew. Showing that he understand. As Naruto held his hand out. Concealment. Obito tried to leave the area but... What did you do? He said. I'll simply take you down along with this dimension. As I said, it wouldn't be fitting for them to know after all these years. You were the one that actually tried to put an end to them. Despite all they've ever done for you. Your whole existence is miserable. You don't truly want to go on because you believe. You will find peace with her. But trust me. She would be disappointed by your actions. Naruto said as he held out his hand. The blade of destruction. The blade start to hum. The whole dimension started to tremble. As the power was so great. Without Naruto limiting it. The physical world outside started to tremble as well. Slightly. Naruto had to constantly limit his own power as well. In fear of destroying the entire planet or... Destroying reality if he was ever to go beyond. After all, his demon eyes are a weaker form of what they were truly in the beginning. Yes, his demon eyes of ruin was originally the demon eyes of chaos. However, they were too powerful so he suppressed them and obtained the demon eyes of ruin. As opening them, just merely opening them, this world could not survive. Naruto's body was packed with so much power that it was incredible to even think he could manage all of it. And now, as Naruto plunged his blade down into one of the cubes, the fragile reality, the fragile dimension that they were in, started to crack. Obito started to fall. He tried to teleport outside, he tried to move with super speed, but all he was doing was falling. The reality around him, it started to break apart. The blade of destruction can destroy anything, can cut through anything, even dimensions and reality itself. Nuta swipe, opening up a cut in reality. As he proceeded to step right through. As Obito dimension plummeted. It fell, and Obito was erased alongside it, never to be seen ever again. This was something that Naruto was going to keep to himself. It wouldn't be good to just burn them with this information. Time skip. Lying in bed, Aizumi was resting her head on his chest. The both of them were simply relaxing. Naruto has done a lot in the past few days. Accomplish a lot. The last thing he did was speak to Jiraiya. Informing him that. His students that he once believed was dead was actually alive. Jiraiya. 
did not hesitate to go there. Upon arriving towards the land of rain, he was greeted by Nagato, no longer in his mechanical walker. When it first happened, Nagato was startled by Naruto freeing him of that. Flashback. Nagato stood behind as he watched. Conan was looking towards him. What's wrong? She said looking at him. A lot of reveals had happened. A lot of things had truly break his mind on what was truly going on in the world. And now, here he was. Nagato did not feel the rain for a very long time. Conan held his hand though as she guided him outside. As the rain fell on his skin. The wonderful rain. In a long time, a smile came on his face. Naruto words that he still had his village to protect and his people to keep safe. He gazed down towards his people with his own eyes. Yes, seen through the eyes of the Pats. But still, his own eyes. The first thing that came to his mind though, it's time that they gave Yaiko a proper burial. Yes, it's time. Naruto was very open to Aizumi. She was well aware of what was going on. He did not lie to the ones that he cared about. However, she was worried. She propped herself up as she looked at him. He placed a hand on her cheek. You are concerned, he said. Of course I am. You're telling me that you'll be fighting gods. I know that your power is beyond what I can truly imagine, but still. The word God. I don't want to lose you, she said. I understand your fear, he said, placing a hand on her cheek, the other one, as he pulled her close and kissed her. But there is nothing to fear. I told you this before, that I never truly understand the concept of the word love. But over the years, I've gotten to. And that is not something I will release. That is not something I would let die out because of my death. So I can assure you that I will be coming back to you no matter what. As she kissed him. When they broke apart, Naruto eyes snapped to the left. What's wrong? Seems we have a visitor. The both of them got dressed as they walked out of the compound. Uchiha guard standing. As Naruto was standing there with Aizumi. Mikato was not surprised, of course. However, a woman descended from the heavens, white hair and clear eyes. Hayuga? Many of them thought. Kaguya said Naruto. Kaguya Osusuke. As Naruto looked at her, she landed down. You are right, she said to him. However, we have a problem, she said. My mind was trying to convince me to come here not only come but to merge with the others but then disappeared she said as she opened her palm to see a symbol inside of it the same symbol that was in Naruto's eyes you put it there yes to counteract his will over you it is just as I expected it seems he's coming as Naruto gazed towards the heaven all of them did a bright light could be seen it was night time and yet, the night was illuminated by an extremely bright light. Seems I have to go, he said. Wait, Aizumi said. Is that them? No. Something else, said Naruto. He stepped forward. Do not worry. I'll be fine, he said. He leaned in as he kissed her right there, in front of everyone. Tell my family what is going on. She nodded her head. Kaguya. Naruto said looking towards her. I will stop any that pass you, she said. I will not allow them to destroy it. I promise. She said to him, Kaguya had went through a lot. Emotionally, mentally, physically as well. She was no longer the same person that she once was. However, there was no time to focus on that now. Naruto nodded before he took off. 
Aren't you going to help him? Aizumi said, He does not need my help. Your concerns about him are justified, but... If you only knew what exactly he is, you wouldn't be concerned. As Naruto arrived between the border of the land of fire and the land of wind, a portal opened up as someone emerged. He looked like your average Osusuke, but he was not. Long white hair, pupilless eyes, dressed in a white and grey robe, with white pants. As he calmly stepped forward, he seemed empty and blank. Naruto gazed up as he watched a bright light that illuminated the night sky like a second sun flew down and slammed into him. The groan was not harmed, nothing was harmed. When the smoke and dust clear, the Asusuke eyes focus on Naruto. I take it that you're Shibai Asusuke. Yes, this vessel will have to do for the time being. Before we fight, I'm curious about something. Why did you create them to begin with? Just like any other. Loneliness. Companionship. However, my goals were far beyond that. And they were the reminder that I once walked this earth. But when you transcended the level that you were at, you faced challenges. Yes, I did. I presume you know greater threats lie out there. Yes, yeah, said Naruto. They want me to end your existence. If my goal is not accomplished, they will erase this sector. It will be wise for you simply to allow me to end your existence without putting up a fight to keep your people safe. Naruto simply looked at him. I understand that you merge all your children together to have a strong enough host for you to take over with your source. But are you sure this body will keep up? It will for the time that I will need it for. You might be powerful but our strengths are leagues apart. Enough talking. I came here to accomplish a job. And your actions of speaking to me will not stop my desire to end your existence. But why, said Naruto, these so-called gods above you, why not strike back against them? Why not help me defeat them? I'm afraid there is no such thing. Their existence cannot be destroyed, but yours can. Moving against them would be a foolish act, something I will not even indulge. Now, his third eye opened up. It was a simple blue eye, pulsating with unnatural power. Both of his eyes were white like the Byakugan, but it wasn't just white. It seems like nothingness. He raised his hand towards Naruto and the area was lift up and swallowed. It compacted upon itself like a black hole, swallowing Naruto in the center. However, Naruto sliced through it, destroying it with his blade. Well, seems you were able to survive that. Shibai lifted his hand to the sky as a red orb appeared in his hand. He then flicked it towards Naruto. It started to grow in size. As Naruto could see the amount of power, he sliced upwards, cutting through the orb before he created a dome around it. The explosion was not something that go out but something that tear in. The existence inside of the orb simply eviscerate everything that stood. Despite the barrier that Naruto put up, it broke through it. Half of the land was plundered. As Naruto looked around, I must say, you're stronger than I thought, said Naruto. I told you, our strengths are leagues apart. My existence is greater than yearn. I will destroy you and your entirety. He said appearing in front of Naruto. His palm buried in Naruto's guts as he twisted his hand. 
causing Newton to spit up blood. Before Newton was launched, crashing through several objects, Shibai appeared above him and sank, his feet down into his chest. Strangely enough, there did not seem to be any force behind it, but when it did touch, the ground opened up. This wasn't a crater, this was a cannon. From a single attack, once again Yuta spat up blood. Shibai grabbed him by the face before he launched him to the sky. Holding his hand out several spears of light, light manipulation appeared. They kept on bombarding and slamming viciously into Naruto. Shibai then held his hand up. Palms made from golden lights slammed together. The entire world shook. It trembled vigorously as Shibai calmly stood there. He held his hand up. The heavens itself started to scream. Thunder and lightning compressed into a tiny ball, drop into Nuta's chest. What followed was chaos. It was like thousands of nuclear bombs went off at the same time. In one section, compressed. The attack was so compressed that it was so violent in one spot. Anyone that was in the center body would have been reduced to rubbles. There was nothing there once he was done. However, a red ball of energy suddenly started to expand until it formed Ruto, completely unharmed. How is this possible? That should have been enough power to erase you. Give yourself some props, said Ruto. You destroyed my physical form a moment ago. However, it wasn't enough power to destroy my source. This doesn't make any sense. Shibai said looking around. This destruction does not match the amount of power I use. Yes, about that. I simply wanted to see how great your power is. However, I underestimated you. If I did not take all your power head on, you would have severely damaged the earth. So I couldn't allow that to happen. So you allow my attacks to hit you and draw them in, despite the damage to your body. Yes, I did. As I said, your power is not enough to destroy my source. But now that I know that, Nuta gripped his face. Shibai was shocked. The reality of me touching you and the one that I did not have now merged together. Nuta took off at speeds that were beyond the human mind could understand as the both of them stood in space. Shibai looked at him before his whole body started to glow with a white aura. This doesn't change anything. Your death is certain and it cannot be stopped. You will be destroyed. Its aura start to gain a ferocious tint. As Naruto noticed that the body that he possessed it was breaking apart. His power was vast. That is why his first body was destroyed because he transcended normal physical form. While he had to eat so much fruit to do that, Naruto could do that by himself. Naruto thrust forward as he started to fight. Their punches were shaking the entire place. As Naruto had to get him away from the elemental nation though. Down below on the elemental nation, Minato stood in the office, his wife and their little girl. Kaguya had her eyes closed as she tried to pinpoint Naruto because of the mark that he placed on her. Aizumi was also there as well. She held her hand out. What seemed to be a projection of darkness came up. Wait, what does this mean? Where is he? He's not on this planet as we speak. But, so where is he? I don't see anything. Kaguya started to use more for power. What's going on, Aizumi said. They're moving too fast. 
Not even I can keep up with their speed. Look, said Minato. As he saw flashes. Wait, is that them? Aizumi said. Yes, it is. Mito kept on focusing as she looked closer trying to see if she could pinpoint what exactly is happening. As Kushina was quiet watching the scene, hoping that everything was going to be alright. When they finally came to a stop, He's alright, Mito said with a smile as she saw Naruto standing there, as nonchalant as ever. As Kushina released a heavy breath, so did Minato and Aizumi. As Kaguya simply watched, Back with the two of them, their attacks were sending ripples and waves throughout the galaxy as they clashed against each other. Shibai created what seemed to be a supernova. The powers seemed to draw and push space itself. He launched it towards Naruto. Naruto held his hand out and summoned flames, unholy flames. Magical flames. The supernova was consumed, shocking Shibai. As Naruto stood there as calm as ever, not fearing or even stepping away from him, Shibai was blasted through the back as a hole, a giant hole ripped through his chest. Naruto stood there once again, sending his attack back in time. The hole immediately closed. Shibai moved at his fastest, intending on ripping Naruto heart clean out of his chest as he was trying to reach for his source. However, Naruto dodged, shocking Shibai as his eyes, for once in a long time was looking surprised. That is when his arm broke into particle of light. Naruto kicked him in the face, snapping his head to the left. Before he pulled out his blade and slashed him, what seemed to be a hundred times in one second. Shibai's body was broken apart. However, it was not coming undone. Naruto thrust forward and, this time, he slammed his fist right into his torso. A shockwave unlike any seen before exploded out of Shibai's back. His body was thrown through the vast emptiness of space. As Naruto held his hand up, black lightning twirled and twisted around his fingers. Lightning of destruction, it became a rod. As Naruto twisted before he thrust it forward, Shibai held his other hand up but it burst into light as well. The rod burst into his chest as Naruto clenched his fist. The rod then imploded, destroying the body. There was no normal Osusuke that could stand to fight Naruto for at least 10 seconds. However, Shibai failed to control the body as he thought. And now, his source emerged. It seemed just to be a fog. A fog that was in the sky, but it was a being of pure power and light. His voice echoed around the area. It was shameful for me to come in this form to fight you. It would seem that you were beyond me for me to fight you at my fullest. But I underestimated you. However, it's over. His form started to glow. Before a beam of light exploded out of it, the mere touch of this beam was erasing everything in sight. It's now over. The beam was enlarging. Before it started swallowed everything. I told you this before, said Newt as he stood there rather calmly. The reality that you succeed is not one that will ever truly be accomplished by you. You believe that your source is powerful. Let me show you what true power entails. Naruto said as he released his source. His form vanishing away. Shibai attack slammed into Naruto's source. However, there was no destruction. As Naruto's source was red and large. It started to spread. 
it start to spread and consume making Shibai look small what is this how is this possible red chains tore into Shibai's source how are you harming me physically this makes no sense what are you doing you hunger for godhood you try to achieve it by simply devouring energies from planets however even then you simply excel to a higher form believing that you were the strongest but then you saw that there were stronger gods out there now you turn your sights upon me believing that your source could erase me your asuskis wouldn't stand five seconds against me if i were to fought for real releasing my source is powers that you can't even fathom and let me show you what the true essence of power is Naruto said as he released a beam similar but it was red Shibai tried to block it but it corrupted his source and consumed him Shibai scream which shouldn't be possible because he shouldn't be feeling pain in this form and yet he could feel his source being destroyed no this is not possible I can't be destroyed in front of me there is nothing that cannot be destroyed Naruto said and so what seemed to be a benevolent god was wiped away well his essence was wiped away his source his power Naruto physical form came back as he was holding on to a tight small white orb in his hand it was all of Shibai's source that remained as Naruto had simply used his own power to override it he could enter other people's source and take it over holding this power within his palm if this was to be released by him and touch the earth the earth would explode there was so much power packed into this one tiny ball as Naruto held it there that is when they arrive the eye god the time god and the emptiness so you finally reveal yourself to me said Naruto the time god was the first one to speak you should have listened to our warnings and simply allow your existence to be erased normally we don't do this but you have left us no choice we can't allow a being like yourself to continue existing as we exist I see you're afraid of me the emptiness spoke foolish we fear nothing we are gods then why fight me said Naruto why wish for me to be erased you were never supposed to be in this universe you were never supposed to be here to begin with your existence here is an abomination and we will fix that wrong and now in doing so we will simply erase it all they all held a hand up as their power started to fluctuate goodbye Naruto watched as planets start to dematerialize space itself start to dematerialize he flew backwards until he came to a stop the elemental nation was a far distance away from him but with his speed he could get there really quickly however the attack that was coming his way it was destruction his specialty but he could not stop this this power was beyond him at the moment it was stronger than him right now as Naruto closed his eyes when the destruction started to affect his whole form the gods were confused when they saw that it started to slow down as Naruto eyes were still close his fingers were being destroyed his hands started to be destroyed but the destruction was not passing him as Naruto demon eyes of ruin started to change as Naruto opened the demon eyes of chaos something that the gods never thought was possible he destroyed their destruction they were shocked they were 
completely shocked beyond their wildest imaginations. They were gods and yet their destruction was destroyed. There was no physical way that should be possible. As the three of them stood there, this makes no sense. The God of Eye, Wisdom and Understanding and Sight, the God of Time, Control, and the God of Nothingness, Emptiness. They had the abilities to wipe out galaxies by themselves with a simple move of their hands. Powers that no other life should possess. They were the strongest. Their power was beyond. The three of them combined, they had the power to wipe out the entire universe. The problem was, they weren't dealing with a universal threat right here. As Naruto pulled out his sword, with this blade in his hand, there was nothing that he couldn't destroy. Everything within creation itself, time, space, reality. The very universe itself as Naruto swipe. The three of them combine their power and shoot a beam towards Naruto swipe. The collision caused a rupture in the universe opening up several different universes as Naruto with this blade in his hand was a multiversal threat the gods were shocked if they was to accomplish that feat it would use a great amount of their power and yet he did it with a swing of his blade no longer was Naruto holding back releasing his full power Opening the demon eyes of chaos, Naruto never truly feared any of these gods. There was nothing in this world that he feared because there was nothing in this world that could end his existence and there was nothing that could stand up to him. Naruto raised the blade in the sky, his demonic eyes of chaos, flickering towards it as he swiped downwards, splitting reality itself. The time god tried to freeze time. However, even time could not stop the swipe. The emptiness try to release pure emptiness, trying to swallow the attack in an unending loop of emptiness, but it was destroyed. The visual god tried to bend reality as it see fit, to bend the attack out of existence, but its very existence was destroyed. The three gods were shocked as a violent eruption wiped out countless galaxies however they survive they found themselves at a loss as naruto stood there he even held his hand out his blade started to break apart and so did he that is when all the different different universes start to close something unusual happened they tried to find him but they could not What's wrong? Having a hard time locating me, said Naruto. That's right. You can't see me, can you? I've spread my source through the vast universes that I've just opened up. My existence is beyond your understanding as we speak. There is no concept of space and time that I don't exist. Know that I've done this and there is no concept in where you escape me. Even before, the reality that I do something was something that you so-called gods could not understand. But now, I am everything and everywhere. Naruto said, as he simply bond his destruction blade to his very source. And then break that source and spread it throughout the multiverse. He then connected all of them to one together. And becoming an existence with the multiverse itself. A being that could transcend it all. After all, Naruto knew that there was going to be a big bad coming for him. So over the past few years he had been getting ready. Preparing himself. But even then it seems like his power was just too much. With every single type of immortality. Doing this, his source was almost destroyed but. It was able to breach through. The very existence of the multiverse itself, linking and combining them all without 
rupturing them into one. So now even if his concept and source is destroyed, he can still bring himself back. He has become a misfit that exists outside of the world. Fragment, order, reason and logic. His existence no longer make logical sense. There was never any reason for me to fear a single one of you. Ruta said, now disappear. With a simple snap of his finger, their bodies start to break apart. They used every ounce of their power trying to retain their self but they could not. They start to slowly be broken apart. As they vanish, erase, their source no longer existing. They were gone, never to be seen ever again. However, as Naruto's source reform, Within near the elemental nation, in a way it was not exactly him. Root has bound himself to the multiverse, linking himself to all existence and all realities. However, he didn't wish to leave the people that he loved. Therefore, he bound a piece of himself, permanently linking it towards this universe. However, in every single universe that is created or expanded, his existence is a definite. He would always be there and always exist. It doesn't matter what happened. He could never truly die. He would allow this body to grow old and die with the ones that he loved after ensuring that this world is at forever peace. However, he himself could never truly meet his end. As we find Ruto sitting in emptiness, a long time has passed since that event. He had went back to the elemental nation. He grew. Kaguya had left. She left on a journey to explore the vast universe. To understand herself more, she was an immortal being just like him. So she left. No longer was there a threat out there that was after her life. As for Naruto, him and Aizumi, they had three kids, three beautiful children. Naruto watched them grow. They were there on his deathbed when he said his goodbyes to all those he loved. Aizumi had passed. Two years before he had passed, they lived. Till their 90s, they grew into old people. Life was wonderful. His baby sis. She fell in love with Sasuke, and they had two kids. Naruto watched as their children had children, and his children had children. At the moment, he was a great, 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 great grandfather. Yes, as stated a long time ago, his existence could not ever be erased. So even after that, formed of him had died on the elemental nation. His existence simply reverted to his source. Aizumi and his kids that passed away were at peace. One might think that it was a lonely existence for him. It was a truly sad affair that he would never see them again. They were at peace right now. As he would never truly ever die. He might even outlive the universe itself. However, there was countless universe in this vast multiverse. So, so much. As for the elemental nation, he had made sure that even beyond his death, things would never, ever revert back to that time where there was war. The Raikage and the Tishikage had passed away. Leaders rised up and make a deal. And the elemental nation was at peace. Kaguya was still out there in the vast universe. She had brought Zetsu along with her. As they explore the universe. To understand more. He might pay her a visit to see how she was doing. Or perhaps. Ask her if she wanted to come with him. To explore other universes. But there was still so much out there to do. His existence would never end. So he would simply. Continue moving on. But he would never forget the ones that he loved. His mother. His father. His sister. His beautiful wife. 
He will always keep them within his heart. His children, all of them that he loves. He will never forget a single one of them. As Naruto opened a space in the multiverse before, he flew through his source entering into another reality. And yeah guys, that's where we're going to be ending this one. Yeah, that was a long one. And as I said, more series are coming soon. So there is nothing for you guys to worry about. So yeah, thank you for all of your help and your support. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other series. And yeah, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace guys.